as long as they can. And then the fish heads kept this thing going. But then that all got pretty cliched too. That's America though. Things always change. They'll never, you know, all. It seems like it's kind of hard for, you know, the fans of the dead and fish and those sort of bands to, it's kind of hard to take a new direction with that, you know, after decades of it. <laughs> see, some, and you can, you can tell when you see all the bands that are out there, you know. Well, yeah. It's like, like the meaning of being a hippie is like really up in the air right now, I feel. Well, see, it's back to the, it, it's the image, it's like it, the image thing, you know. Oh, I'm going to be a hippie today, so I'm going to wear this and I'm going to act like that. You know, it, it didn't, it's, we didn't just turn it, it, it was a slow process with us, you know, like us musicians, we're playing this, but then all of a sudden it gets heavier and heavier, the music gets heavier, even like shit like in Agata De Vida, that was, that was listened to, I mean, because that was a one side thing and all different sounds, it was totally different, you know, the guy saying like shit, they didn't play that good, but it was cool, that was what, you know, anything different, Sky Pilot by Eric Burden and the Animals, shit like that, you know. Um, a Salty Dog album by Poco Harum. And this is all before 1970. And then it's changed so fast. And all of a sudden, the disco goes away, and then you get Urban Cowboy and all that shit. You know, America just, whatever sells, they just keep it, keep pushing it. I mean, the hippie look they did. You know, all of a sudden, all the girls are wearing bangs and long straight hair. You know, just like we were. And did it? Did I mean the eighties? The eighties couldn't have been the seventies. Real hippie sucked. time were the seventies sucked. Eighties, it got no man. It was eighties. All of a sudden, now there's this resurgence of people that are so. In, young people are so interested in what that was all like. Now I'm saying it from my perspective of being in Milwaukee. And Milwaukee's not the hippest town in the world and things are slow to get there. You know, when, when the original hippie, when they buried, they had that mock funeral in 60, end of 66 in San Francisco, the death of hippie freebie because they just saw it was all getting Americanized. It was becoming a fashion thing. However, it carried my, the vibe carried around the world because my friend Ellie, who grew up in the Soviet Union, was a, there were Russian hippies that used to fringe their own stuff, get in trouble with the law. Rock and roll was banned, but they black marketed it, you know. She had her hair down to her waist and learned how to, learn, took English for a second language so she could understand Beatle lyrics. Mm. You know, there were hippies in all over Europe. You know? And it's, yeah, like it's never really going to die, is it? I mean, there'll always be someone. There's all, yeah, there's always going to be someone. Yeah. It's going to, okay, so like, People tell me, hey, I love that outfit you're wearing. Where'd you get? I said, I dress like this all the time. Because I, I I, didn't change. I tried not to change, you know. I I had to change lifestyles, obviously, you know. I had, once I had all my kids and stuff, and then, after, then I, you know, I was a late bloomer in college and ended up actually being a, newspaper editor and doing I had to give up music for like 15 years but now that I'm back into it so now I'm just my old hippie self again which is cool because I never in my head stopped being one and there's a lot of old I find a lot of older ones I bump into that I wouldn't have thought who are were hippies you know a lot, a lot of old women at that at the choir I sing at Turns out that they were, <laughs> they, they know what they're talking about, but then there's always going to be people like Wildcat Hawkins who is chasing that dream. <laughs> it doesn't want to be fake. He wants to know how, what, 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 what the true meaning of it was and why we were what we were and 
what we thought we were, you know. It, but it was mostly a, yeah. just just telling corporate America, which we didn't have a name for back then, but just the system, go stuff it, you know. You know, I had the same thing, you know, obviously, like, I'm, I'm only 35, but, uh, like, I... I 35 is half of me. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I had no... I had nothing in my head that I was a hippie any longer, you know? But then, like, uh, somewhere along the way, a few years ago, I started getting this itch. And I started listening to the old music again. And I started making beads. <laughs> and I started going out into the woods. Yes! And just, I just it's realized, moving. like... Yeah, because I, I think I thought that it was impractical, or I thought It that, is impractical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it is, or, or I thought, <coughs> you know, I thought that, uh... Well, no one's gonna accept me if if I'm weird. I, I need to do. I have to do country, or I have to find some kind of indie rock, or s something hipster. You know, like, I mean, I thought that I had to be a hipster, and that was the only thing I could possibly be. Otherwise, there'd be no no options for me. The, 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 you know, the two things for a hippie is be yourself. I don't think that I would have gotten as far as I have without meeting you, because uh, you're giving me confidence. You know. Yeah. Well. And it's easy, really, you know, you just, you, you got to have a sense of humor. You got to look at a bunch of shit and say, oh my God, you know, and, and you also have to know that, that there is, there is more here. We are just part of this whole great universe. Every molecule, every thing is connected, you know, we're just, vib we're, we're vibrations that have slowed down enough that you can see us, you know. We're all part of each other's movie. And yeah. the music just... I, I don't... I like a lot of the new stuff. Of course, I love Lady Gaga. But man, there are... Well, there are some tunes that I just can't hear again in my life just because over... But man, there are some... There's some stone shit. Buffalo Springfield. Field shit. I could just... I can hear Hendrix... Hear them songs a million times. I'll play them a million times. It feels, you know, and I'm still getting better as a musician, which you, if you don't quit, you're just going to get better. And if you just stick with it, you don't have to say, I'm a hippie. We never used the term even. That was the public laid that on us. Like I said, we were referred to each other as heads or freaks. Right. Um... And that was with two E's because we were free. <laughs> you know. Oh yeah, that's nice. Yeah. We're freaks or at or heads. You just say, yeah, he's a head. And if you if the other guy was a head, you got along. You just got along because you're on the same. We were listening to the same shit. We were into the same groove, and we were. Yeah, I I don't know. I I think that I have a problem with authority. I just don't oh, like listening. I just don't like listening to anything anyone has to say ever. You know, <laughs> and it's a problem. <laughs> that, that's you the know? other thing. Our fuck, you know, just give the finger to the yeah, authority. Oh my God, you know, and then, <laughs> well, I took that to the limit. Yeah, like I, you know, I don't consider myself to be, you know, anything really, but I do know that when it comes to music that I am interested in, I like music that gives me a sense of peace in my heart, music that gives me a sense of warmth and like feeling like I have a place in the universe, you know. And that can, that can be a nice quiet tune or that can just be a great crunch groove that what, what's ever getting you there on whatever level, that's what... That connection you're seeing, like you, you said, like your third eye. It, it's just the bullshit's gone. The music's in the heart, the soul. If you can't perform with that, you're just standing up there. Doing, you're Dan Corn, you know. No, I shouldn't. Well, don't worry about that. <laughs> Cut that out of there. He was back last night. By the way. Yeah. Well, see the. I think it's interesting that I mean I get that from listening to Hendrix. You know, and Hendrix, people think, oh, this is exciting, this is... Oh, he burns his guitar. You know, he, he did that once, just to show up, he talk. No, you listen to Hendrix for real, and you're going to get somewhere. I, I mean, listening to Hendrix, I feel it's spiritual It to is. Me, that, was already, that, was, that was religion to us. We're not going to listen to some Bach fugue. Go listen to... 
Jim used to talk about the electric church and nobody knew what he was talking about. That's what he was talking about. Yeah, I don't know. It's like, just the ever-falling dust that makes it so hard to see. You know, burning of the midnight lamp. The end of that, if, if that's not religion, when they're all saying, ah, that they're just singing that with that, that harpsichord and him, that, that, you're right, you got it, man. And you don't have to, you don't have to label yourself or this is why I am, just be you. A lot of times, like, uh, like, it's not about words to me. It's not about the lyrics and songs, even though good lyrics, I mean, I enjoy lyrics that I think are good and they resonate with me. I like it when they have some symbolic value a lot of times. But uh, really, I just, everything boils down to the feeling that I get, and that's it. I don't even care how it's delivered, really. You know, whether it's, uh, you know, perfect technique or not, or, or, or whatever, you know. Listen. I'll never be Jimi Hendrix, and neither will anybody else on the face of this earth ever, okay? <laughs> that was, that can't be done. There's people that spend their lifetime notating his shit, which is just crazy, you know, it doesn't even add up. It would, I think, the day he died was the saddest fucking, we just couldn't imagine, we were just, because he was always the gold standard. No matter what any other band did, we'll listen to what Jimmy just did, you know? And we thought Jimmy was just going to lead us, and all of a sudden Jimmy's gone. And then, yeah, like I said, the, the day the music died, yeah, it wasn't when Buddy Holly went down. It was 1970 for me. I mean, it did. But you can keep... Talk about that feeling. Now I can play drums with all kinds of people down there, but there's a feeling when, when I, all of a sudden when you and me connect, it, it gets it gets light, it gets easy, and it's just so cool, and it feels so good. I just whatever we you know. So I love playing with you, man. Not going nuts, but I can't go nuts when it gets nuts, you know. I, I can, I'm really faster than I ever showed people. I can, you know, I just love playing that. That one time Jesse picked up bass and we were, he was just going nuts because it was so, was coming so easy and it felt so good. I said, well, that's why we do this, you know. This woman last week, or two weeks ago after the opening jam she comes up and says why are you guys playing like open mics why are you guys here because this is where we get together and this <laughs> we're having a good time you know yeah i just like it's it's up to us to kind of just like hustle up whatever we can next but uh we could you got to make the music first and you got to feel it yeah just feeling it is is was always it for me you know and I, I, I assume that all the other guys I ever played with felt the same, but they find out it ain't it's not always like that. <laughs> A lot, it's not like that. So when you find like people that still have that same, if anybody's gonna carry hippies on, it's gotta be like you and my daughters. Just gotta find people, you know, um, and not, like. Uh... Not, the, the thing is to, to find out who, who's bullshit and who's playing the role or who's sincere about it, you know? When I make songs, if I, if I write or I record, uh, I don't even feel that comfortable saying this on the record, but I will say something about it because it's like sacred to me. But uh, I just, uh, I remain open to what comes, you know? I don't have an agenda when I'm writing. I don't have an agenda when I'm jamming. No. I just try to. F I try to follow. I, I don't. I don't try to lead. I try to follow what comes. Yeah. You know, and that's that's where I feel. Uh, it becomes something spiritual to me, and uh, I just want to be in harmony with that vibe. That was. You know? that, that's some. Actually, that's that's a really good summation of what we were aiming for. What you just said. That, that spirituality. And that went away so fast, like I said, once once it became commercialized. 
And once you got all these bands pretending that they're... Well, I just, well, I mean, I, I was a teenager. I went to a store and I got, a, you know, a tie-dye t-shirt, you know, and I didn't even know that it that people used, that the thing with tie-dye t-shirts was you do it yourself. Yeah. I didn't even know that, you know. I bought, like, an immaculate, like, right. be- beautiful the, Grateful Dead t-shirt. Right. It was just very beautiful, you know. I know. But I didn't even know that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when we, I remember the first time we tried doing that, you know, just fucking up t-shirts left and right. <laughs> well, I saw, uh, I saw an ad, a Facebook ad the other day from, uh, like, a, like, a boutique men's fashion company from the UK that was selling what was supposed to be, like, authentic 90s rock and it just looked like a flannel from Goodwill and it was like 300 bucks <laughs> authentic you yeah know. authentic yeah oh my god I was just meaning to ask you real quick before we wrap this up uh, about your history as a steel worker mm. so you were a steel worker for 17 years was mm-hmm. it yeah, 16. Okay, because a lot of people have the idea that hippies are lazy and they don't work. Um, so I'm wondering what, what you could say about that. Because cause you, you have a job now, I know, part-time, and uh, that's at Stella Blues. Yes. But what can you say about hippies and work? That was another sort of divide. Um, so many of the, the later hippies... I mean, you know, the original guys were on the streets in San Francisco, a small amount. Once it started growing, vast majority of them were college students with draft deferments, and it didn't have to work. So it's really easy for them to be weekend communists or weekend radicals and all that shit because they know if things get bad, they got they can go home, you know. Now, when I where I grew up in Bayview on the south side of Milwaukee, we were all blue collar. College wasn't even considered. If you made it to they tried to get me, my buddies tried to get me to fail all my exams so I wouldn't graduate high school because they all dropped out. I mean, <laughs> that was a thing of honor to drop out of high school. We Nobody, education on my side of town. You got a job where your old man got a job and you could work you 30 years and get a pension and that was the goal, you know. Well, we didn't want that, you know. And us players, we wanted to be be able to do that. But in the meantime, our parents didn't have anything extra, you know. We were never we never starved, but we were poor, right? And most of my buddies were just maybe a little better or worse, you know, like Pelsinski's had twelve kids, Jazeski's had fourteen, we had five. All working factories, you know. because Milwaukee back then was the tenth biggest city in the country, it's not even in the top thirty right now. And factory work all over. And you did not need a even a high school education. You worked with your back and your arms, you know. But <coughs> excuse me. Corona. If <laughs> if you wanted a new set of drums <laughs> you had to work for it, you know. And if you got in trouble and you had to pay your lawyer, <laughs> you got to pay for it. My pa ain't going to do it. If you want a, mo- a motorcycle, you got to. So we ended up, we're, we're working. The South Side is the ones that I managed to turn on. There's a whole bunch that never did. But the a South Side working hippies, we had to be working hippies, and it was tough at times because if you're tripping on Sunday and you're in the steel shop on Monday morning, it's, it is not a good time, believe me. You know, it was it could be scary or just exhausting, you know. And, and at first, you know, we, when I start growing our hair and that, the other guys in the shop started giving you shit and calling me Susie and all that. Well, I didn't care. A boy named Sue just came out, so I said, you can call me whatever. So I was Susie, like, for four years at this one place. But if you're a competent worker, pretty soon they, they don't fuck with you no more, you know, as long as, you know, if you're a good worker. And we we didn't, 
we held, shit, my buddy Tommy was a machinist for 30 years. My Gary was a welder for 40 years, you know. I was a steel worker till I crushed my feet in a motorcycle accident. We all pissed and moaned. There's a lot of things we'd rather be doing, but we, you, it was just reality. You can't live on a commune like so many people. Well, let's start a commune and we'll live off of the land. And oh yeah, right. Okay. Well, you wait for your vegetables to grow, and you know. Well, we'll yeah, well, we can just take acid. <laughs> okay. You know, there was a lot of naivety and shit went along with that too. You know, but and it. You know, pretty soon you're smoking weed at work a little bit, you know. But steel workers mostly drinking beer at lunchtime. <laughs> now, you you said something about the biker stuff. Like, you felt like um, you felt like when you became a biker or that became sort of a new identity for you, did you say that that stemmed from kind of like feelings of some anger or disappointment from bands not working out? Is that what you were well, saying? Well, definitely. Or? And a girlfriend leaving me twice, two or three times, whatever. But, yeah, every time the band broke... I always liked motorcycles, right? Yeah, right. I just thought they were cool. And the English bikes especially. We just loved Triumphs and the VSAs and shit that, you know, see it. It was just cool. But these guys I grew up with around me, they, they were buying these ratty old motorcycles while I was still in high school and playing in the band, you know? And then when the, yeah, when the band, when the band just disintegrated, I just was like helpless. It's another thing about being loyal to your friends. I didn't, I never did, you know I say I suck on a lot, on guitar and stuff a lot and shit. And they, the guys are always giving me shit about my drumming because I was the youngest and I was an easy target. And also the girls liked me, to, you know, so they did get on me and shit. So I didn't know how good I was, but it seems like every gig, my, during my senior year, there's guys coming up to me saying, why don't you play with us? Why don't you come on and play with us? You know, we're, we're better than them guys. But I I was with these guys since first grade, you know, so I'm loyal. I'm thinking they're, we're all, we're family, man. We're, no, I stick with them, I'll stick with them. Well, then, like I say, graduation comes and them just, psh, I was just shocked. I didn't know what to do. And I, and I didn't know these other guys that had been coming up to me, so I couldn't contact them, you know. Uh, I, I'm just... So I started hanging around and drinking beer and making noise and riding with our little local... And then pretty soon we got, you know, six or seven of us hanging around regular. And then, hey, let's make a little motorcycle club. So we did, and then... Then eventually the big motorcycle club <laughs> said, how would you like to join us? Like, you don't have a choice. <laughs> we got drafted, you know. But to us, that was really cool because I wouldn't have, I would have, I was riding with the, with my buddies, but they all knew the new guy that I was playing guitar with. I still had the band going and I would have just not gone any farther. We used to just party. We were party guys. We weren't violent. Uh, crime in thing like it is now so much meth dealers and all that we did shit if we make it to Wisconsin Dells from Milwaukee that was a big run for us you know we'd drink some beer and ride back and try to look bad you know and, and then we'd do acid and listen to Hendrix <laughs> hippie bikers you know when the big club when Serrano's fingers went went like that and he couldn't play anyone. He was the best, he's still the best I've ever played with. But that crushed me. And I said, that's when I said, fuck it, you know. And I, I swung in with the big guys. And that was, that's another whole story too, you know. When we're talking a major club, <laughs> you know. Because, uh, right, because... Because uh, you... then you're in the army. Yeah. Then you are. Then you got it. Then there's officers, and then there's fines, and there's mandatory runs, and there's all this and that shit. And but we didn't have to do the probationary thing. We just swung over, so that was cool. But then the guys that did have to go through the shit, they hated us because we got in. <laughs> yeah, you know, and they thought I was just a, 
I still wasn't shaving, I don't think. <laughs> I had my hair down to here. I was I was not a typical looking biker, but that was just a something I want. One day I just said to the guy, you can still get out back then. You can't get out now. I said, I can't handle this no more. I got two kids and one on the way. I said, I just can't, you know, so you got to turn your patch and shit in and then you, if you don't own nothing, they let you go. You might get your motorcycle stolen or something, but that's the price you pay for getting out. Now you can't get out, so good thing I got out of that. But you, uh, you ended up having a pretty serious motorcycle accident? Yeah, very. I, well, I had, I had one in 69, which was mostly taking skin off my body. But the one in 84, I got thrown over the top of my bike at 70 miles an hour, hit the ground with no helmet on, kept my head up, snapped my feet in half, tore my calf off, took all kinds of holes. That was a wreck. And for uh, three weeks, intensive care, and I was the first guy in Wisconsin on a self-administered morphine machine, <laughs> which was which made things a lot better for three weeks, but then that ends. Then I had four surgeries after that, been addicted to opioids every time, kicked that. They were gonna cut, then I got gain green almost from their therapies, whirlpool thing, my whole lot of thing. They were gonna cut my leg off at the knee. I almost lost his hand once in a, a steel accident. So it's a miracle I'm still playing. It's a miracle I'm still alive. And then while I was recovering from all the surgeries, I'm living on Percodons and Paps Blue Ribbon. I'm not eating or nothing. And then that's when I really went. And that's when the cirrhosis really got serious. And then I ended up in a hepatic coma for 11 days. And they told my family I probably wasn't going to make it. And I, <laughs> as I was going under, I said, man, <laughs> I know I've been an asshole, but if I can see my kids grow up, I'll never touch another drop of alcohol in my life. And it's been 36 years now, and I've played in bars now for 30 years and managed not to even have a sip of beer, so. Yeah, I really respect that a lot about you, you know. Uh, I'm. I choose not to drink myself too, but uh, I, I don't talk about it really, just because of how it works well, with, with music venues, you know, like yeah. they're trying to sell drinks, you know. <laughs> I know, I know exactly. So, it's something you don't talk about, but I mean, it's just a quiet thing, you know. Well, it, it it took my son's life, and all my uncles died of alcoholism, on the Irish side, you know. This is. They ask me if I have to. Do you have to go to meetings and all that? Hell no, man. <laughs> You're gone for 11 days and you come back. That's all right. I don't. No, I'll I'll give people advice or anything if they ask for it. You know about I, the guy guy at work. I'm keeping off the bottle. You know. But I don't. I'll teach, but I won't preach. You know. It just. I just don't ever want to see anybody get as sick as I was because dying of <laughs> cirrhosis really hurts. <laughs> it's like you got a ice pick stuck in your liver and you just keep dry heaving and I'm thinking this is how you die in the gutter, you know. And That's amazing, man. The accident was almost like, I don't know, if there were, if you think of a personalized God, like I'm going down, down this freeway and he, have drunk trying to get home and like God, you know, I, I gave you talent, I gave you personality, you musical, you, you good looking, you got beautiful kids, and what are you doing? You're fucking drinking yourself to death. You want okay? You want to be a big shot here? Boink! Try this, <laughs> you know? Okay, I'll 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 change. So yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, I mean, I don't know. But now, now it's just so great because now I'm playing with the best, I'm playing with the best cats in town, you know. And people respect my abilities. I know I'm, I know I'm good. And I know I'm a good singer. 
Yeah. Man. Yeah, man. So life is great, and I'm still hip, and you're going to be hip, and your kid's going to be hip. And yeah, man, I just, from... Just don't, just don't work at it. Just be it. Yeah. Just be it. Just yeah. be it. It's uh, I, I just see it around this area, you know. I see this uh, these other type of musicians, these people that we both know, and it's well, some think they gotta be this, and some think you gotta be that, or you gotta be this, and you, you know, you don't have to. No, that's that's anti hippie. <laughs> you don't have to be nothing, but be but be as good as it, be as good as you can. I just want to sing it from my heart. I don't care what genre people play. I just oh. want to hear music with a lot of heart and soul. I do everything. Look, I do every kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. Hey, hey, man, thanks for the interview. Uh, take, well, you should have a lot of material here. And yeah. I